Hey everyone, welcome to OnTap. I'm Chris, and I'm not an expert, just a guy who enjoys good beer. So in this episode, I want to do a taste test of the most popular beers produced by the Cerveceria Cuauhtémoc Moctezuma, Mexico's second largest brewery. This brewery is most well known for producing the Dos Equis line of beers, but here's the thing. Dos Equis is not the only kind of beer that this company produces. Not by a long shot. I actually did an episode on Dos Equis, if you want to check that out, uh, link down below and card over here. But in this episode, we're going to see how the Dos Equis beers stack up against all of the other beers produced by this brewery. Oh, and also just to clarify, because I didn't really say this in the Dos Equis episode, the Cerveceria Cuauhtémoc Moctezuma was actually created officially in 1985 when the Cuauhtémoc Brewery and the Moctezuma Brewery merged together. Before then, they were totally separate. And the Moctezuma Brewery was the one that produced the Dos Equis brand, but the Cuauhtémoc Brewery was actually founded in 1890 by José A. Muguerza, and they produced beers like the um, Carta Blanca line of beers, which we're going to try today. Oh, and also really quick, um, as of 2010, this brewery is actually a Heineken subsidiary, so yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. Anyway, enough about history and brewery stuff, let's get into tasting. So first up, we have the classic Dos Equis. Yep, very light, uh, not much of a head. Doesn't smell like much, I mean, a bit of a lager, and uh, let's take a taste. The thing about this beer is it has a really, really minor shade of that bright character that I characterize as being sort of very definitive in, in Mexican beers. The bright flavors, it's not quite like lime, but it's just this sense of like a summery kind of hot weather feeling that I think is very characteristic in uh, Mexican beers that you don't get so much in other lagers from other countries. The Dos Equis here, it's a little bit more tempered. There's just sort of like a little hint of kind of Mexican brightness, as I would I would say, with a lot of just kind of more standard, generic kind of lager flavor to it. I would say it tastes like a reasonably light, easy to drink, garden variety, generic beer that's got a little, little hint of that kind of characteristic Mexican brightness. So next up, we have, pulling at random, Sol. So this one's still very pale, but it's a little bit more golden. I mean, unsurprising, I'd imagine, if you're calling a beer Sol, you'd want it to have a little bit of that kind of golden sunshine color. So it doesn't smell like much. Maybe, maybe a very hint of a lemony, kind of lemon flavor. It definitely is very light and it's very summery and it has, I almost want to say like a, a, a really, really minor like lemon flavor to it. Not much, but it's just a, a tiny little hint there. It also feels a little bit less carbonated. Definitely something you'd want to be drinking when it's sort of hot and sunny and um, you know, really, really during the day. This, this tastes very much like a daytime beer. I think the other thing too is the fact that it doesn't have that much carbonation in it also maybe doesn't help that much because I'm just really focusing on how just light and, and borderline thin the body of the beer is. Again, not, not much in the way of strong flavors. Nothing actively like horribly off-putting about it, but nothing that's really notable enough, I'd say. So next up, number three, pulling at random, we have Tecate. Looks quite light, you know, like a lager. Got a little bit more of a fluffy head on it compared to these other two. Doesn't smell like much, has a little bit of a, slightly maybe not, not great smell. That pass category, it, it really tastes like a not particularly great, reasonably low grade beer where there's a little bit of that not super pleasant aftertaste, that kind of, I describe it as like a slightly not quite sour flavor, but that feeling you'd associate with beers that are not quite as high end and it's rather thin bodied. There's not really much in the way of flavor. It's just really off the table. As far as I'm concerned, this is very much a pass. Moving on, let's go to beer number four and that's going to be Bohemia. Really doesn't smell like much. Let's take a taste. This is almost in some ways the most European of the beers on the table. It's, it's the kind of thing where I don't feel like it has as much of the kind of bright, almost pseudo lemony, summery characteristics that I think of with, as I've said before, kind of Mexican beer. This one tastes the most just sort of like a pretty standard lager. 
it's perfectly fine. There's nothing off-putting about it. It's got an acceptable body. There's no kind of bad, sour, negative aftertaste, anything like that. It, you know, hits all kind of the basic points. There's just nothing about it that's particularly exciting. It's very much in that it tastes like beer category. Moving on, beer number five. What do we still have down here? Okay, Dos Equis Amber is much more sort of an orangey, you know, amber color. So, but it doesn't really smell like much. It smells kind of like many of the other ones. The thing about this beer is while it's not maybe as sort of off-putting, shall we say, as the Tecate, it's not far off. The fact that this has an amber color is almost in some ways, dare I say, almost deceiving. Sort of if I were doing a blind taste test, I couldn't even see the color of this beer and I just took a drink, I wouldn't even think this is an this is an amber. It also, it just, it feels very light. It feels very thin. Like there's, there's really not much flavor to this almost at all. And the sour aftertaste, there's almost, there's very little of it. Certainly there's, there's less of it than with the Tecate, but there's still just a little hint of that at the back. It just, it feels very thin. It's, it's maybe not quite like a light beer. I don't know about you, but for a beer that's an amber, I don't really think it should be light and thin and summer and summery. It should have a little bit more kind of weight to it, a little bit more flavor. And there's just, there's very little flavor in this. Let's get to the last beer, which is, Carta Blanca, um, look at the color here. Yeah, very light, looks like all the rest. Very slightly almost sweet smell to it. What that is, is it's like all of these other ones, but if you just made the beer better. It's still quite light in terms of its profile. It's not like it's a heavy, you know, thick sort of beer. It still very much tastes like a, like a lager but it just has that proper feeling of, you know, what, what, in my opinion, what a beer kind of should taste like, or certainly a lighter lager beer. Here's my final assessment. In last place, we have Tecate. This beer is really just, it, it's, it's passable. Um, it's got a, kind of a sour aftertaste. It's very thin. It doesn't have a lot of nice flavor, almost in the borderline kind of lower quality light beer category without technically being a light beer. Dos Equis Amber Especial. It's basically just like this, but not quite as much a beer with that sour aftertaste. It's still there, but there's, there's not as much. Um, again, very thin, not really much flavor, and really Really no sense of it being an amber beer, so I would pass on that. Soul is the sort of beer that's like right on that line in terms of the pass consider. It's very light, it's very summery, it's got a very, very mild, almost kind of lemony flavor to it, but aside from that, the beer has still got a little bit of sort of, I'd say, thinness in its body, and I get it's a summery beer, but also the fact that I feel like it's not that carbonated. It, it, it's still, you know, of course got bubbles in it, but it's not as carbonated as many, many other beers means that the somewhat stillness of it kind of makes you think about the fact that the beer is so light and a little bit thin, which isn't great, but with the little bit of kind of, you know, lemon hint and, and you know, at least the basic acceptableness of it being put together, it, it's not like a hard pass, though I think with this beer, you, you really would only drink it if you're at a party, it's outdoors, it's hot, and the sun is shining. Bohemia is in some ways the most generic, perfectly okay, but sort of nothing exemplary. Dos Equis is like Bohemia, but I think it's just got a little bit more of that sort of bright note mixed into it. Um, not that it's very strong, but it's notable enough that it's sort of an interesting, nice combination of kind of, as I've said, kind of Mexican brightness with more kind of traditional sort of European, you know, Euro-American style um, table lager. So you put that together, it's, it's you know, a slightly interesting combination while still being very much a middle of the road table lager. And then finally, we have Carta Blanca, which is, in my opinion, honestly, the best beer on the table. It is just like these other two, Dos Equis and, and Bohemia, but just simply the best version of that got an acceptable body, there's nothing off-putting about it, it's not thin or watery, and it's just a nice table lager. It's not amazing, but it's a perfectly nice table lager, and I think out of all the six, this is the one if I were gonna pick you know, any beer to go with, I would pick this one. If I were picking f like sort of Mexican food specifically, I, I think I would maybe actually go with Dos Equis. Carta Blanca, I might just go with if I was looking for just 
a beer to have with friends. Dos Equis, for some reason, I don't know why, I guess it's just that, that bright note. It's got that the brightest note of, of the four. Food pairings, again, skip this. This one, maybe if you're having really light food, like if you're having ceviche, I, again, during the day and it's hot and you're outside and with friends, fine. I mean, maybe if it's nighttime and it's like a, still like a million degrees outside because the day was just like unbearable. Okay, fine, whatever. But um, you, you, you kind of get the idea. Otherwise, if you're not having food that's not super light, like again, skip it. This one's also pretty generic. You just, you know, kind of have it with whatever. So anyway, yeah, so that's my assessment. And um, as always, please, you know, remember to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time.